And on today's show, we're highlighting the practices of Rao Garuda and Christy Mueller, part one of this week's series featuring retirement income masters with top of the table and MDRT platform speaker, Tom Hagna. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Steve. I'm always glad to have you back on the show. You've been several times and uh, you really have this new book out, which I love, called Retirement Masters. And actually, I thought you were just gonna do your own, you know, here's our my monologue, I'm gonna see a lot of information from Tom. But actually, what you did was you collected some of the top players in our industry that deal in retirement income. Tell me, how did the book come apart? And then we'll get, yeah. into, we'll get so, into this. So if you remember my first book, Paychecks and Playchecks, mm -hmm. was really my words, my language, my stories that have been successful for 25 years, but I'm not the only one in the retirement income market. There's, so I went around the country and I found 14 top pros, and each chapter is their story. What do they say? What do they do? How do they explain these concepts? And I think it's, a, it's really a fascinating book. When you think about having this kind of collection, it's kind of a mini anthology of the big players in our area. There's so much concept. When I dropped the, you dropped this to me in the mail, I read it through a straight sitting. I'm thinking like, I gotta read it again now and take notes. I read it first because it was really good drama, but there's a lot of good concepts here in yeah. sales strategy. And I gotta tell you, Tom, I've been in this thing 30 years, there was new stuff in here. Yeah, well I tell people, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like everything that's in here, mm -hmm. but you're gonna find one or two or three things that fit you. And right. when you can find those just two or three things that fit you, it can change your whole practice. Well, let's talk a little bit about the book, is it on Amazon.com? Yes, it's on Amazon. Okay, so they it's can pick on it all up. my websites as okay. well. Okay, yeah. and, and go ahead, if you want to give your website, go ahead. TomHegna.com. Okay, it's place. right in the lower third. You can just read that, yeah. and, and we'll, uh, we'll let you go ahead and order the book. It's really great. I think you're going to find some, like you said, a couple ideas. Uh, tell me about Raul Garuda. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a guy that's really something. I read your little script on him. Yeah. What an interesting story. Well, I think he's one of the most interesting stories in the whole book. Here, here's a guy from India whose father bought him a one-way ticket, put $7 in his pocket and said, good luck, son. And he's made 21 consecutive top of the table qualifications. Think about that. That's, that's a compelling story just in and of itself. And he does it with life insurance and lifetime income annuities, really. But, but, but I thought in your book it says he, his specific vocation was with doctors. Yes. So how, so, did he, how did he get connected? Well, you know, he started working in, he was an engineer by trade, okay? Mm -hmm. But, and, and then he started having a tax problem because he was making this money. And so here he's trying to solve his own tax problem as an engineer. And that's how he got into the financial services industry. And so he found other people who had tax problems, which a lot of them are doctors. And if you look, I just love some of the language that he uses. You know, he says, um, uh, would you like an MRI of your portfolio? We see danger before danger sees you. Um, when was the last time you had a full executive checkup with a financial stress test? I mean, these are these are words and language mm -hmm. that doctors relate to. A cashectomy will be performed on your qualified <laughs> plan assets. We like to show you better choices. I mean, these are powerful words. Uh, you have too much LDL, which is the bad cholesterol in your stock portfolio. We would like to balance it. That's powerful language. And this is all his proprietary wi wisdom in these little quips right. that he's created. Wow. Well, when I think about this, he's got a, and you were talking, I think it was in your book, or I can't remember it was in the script, you talk about this Indian doctor case study. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, he was working with an Indian doctor who had a dream of providing um, doctor education scholarships for 10 students a year for the rest of his life. And what Rao was able to show him with a lifetime income annuity is this doctor could provide 10 scholarships for doctors in India every year for the rest of his life. And when, when, when Rao finally delivered it all and, and showed him how it was all working, the doctor started shaking and, and started crying because this was his lifelong dream. And so I think a lesson here, Steve, is that hmm. our advisors should be asking what really matters to their clients. Like, you're not just going to walk up to somebody and think that, they, that their dream is to leave mm -hmm. 10 scholarships a year for doctors in India, but that was this doctor's uh, dream. And with a lifetime income mm -hmm. annuity, he was able to fulfill the dream. So he took this as, from a legacy point of view. This a doctor wanted to do something and give something back to his people. Yes. That, that to me is a, a huge issue. And I think sometimes we forget we're just doing the dry pay the state taxes, Make sure everything transfers, bypasses probate. We're kind of, but we don't sometimes see the enthusiasm of a charitable gift or a legacy that we want to see. Right, and I think it was all about the legacy. You know, there's another case in here of of a fan, of a couple that kept coming to his seminars. He does a lot of seminars, and they kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming. And you know, he thought, gee, are they just you know here for the free meal or what are mm -hmm. they doing? But finally, after about three times, they said, we finally think we understand it. We want to meet with you. 
And so they met with him and they said, they brought in, he said, I'll need your, I'll need your paperwork. They brought in a Samsonite suitcase full of statements and they were worth over $5 million. And uh, they said, okay, do your thing. And he said, well, what exactly is my thing? You know, that guaranteed paycheck thing. And they wanted guaranteed income for life. And, you know, I think sometimes we complicate it all too much mm -hmm. that we think, oh, well, we got to structure something in a certain way. People love guaranteed paychecks for life. And Rao has figured that out. When we come back from the break, we're going to shift our highlight from Raul to a huge female producer. Christy Muller, you're going to really enjoy your story. We'll be right back right after this message. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, I'm with Top of the Table and MDRT Platform Speaker Tom Hagna. Tom, you're talking about, you know, boy, when, when Tom says this is one of the top, not just top, he's the number one female producer in the United States. Wow, Christy Muller, tell me about this gal. Well, Christy has probably sold as much lifetime income as any other woman in, in the country. And um, she's always been a great student. I remember when I was giving meetings, she would come in and she'd always sit down in the front row. She'd mm -hmm. have a tape recorder. She'd tape everything I'd say so she could say the words. So she's always been a great student. But what really solidified it for Christy was the death of her own mother. Mm -hmm. She watched her mother dying, but her mother had complete peace of mind because Christy had set up guaranteed paychecks for life for her mother with through a lifetime income annuity. And so she watched as her mother was dying. She was worried about a lot of things, but she was not worried about income. And that really solidified it for Christy. Sometimes you see that sometimes life events like the death of a loved one will really propel you into seeing the value of what we really do as advisors. Yeah. I mean, that, that kind of crystallizes things. It does. And, you know, the title of her chapter is, it's not about fees, it's about value and performance. See, so many people are focused on fees. Oh, the fees are too high of this, or the fees are too high of that. And, for example, for variable annuities. I always said it's not about the fees. See, if I could retire on low fees, I guess fees would matter. But I don't get to retire on low fees. You know what I get to retire on? Where can I make the most and lose the least after fees? It's the value and the mm -hmm. performance that really counts. And she talks about a... A lady, she del delivered a death benefit check on a variable mm -hmm. annuity in 2002. And the lady kept looking at the check and looking down and looking up and looking down. And she was all nervous. And, and, and she said, this is too much. My account value isn't this much. And she gave the check back to Christy. And Christy said, no, this is exactly correct because you had a guaranteed death benefit. And the guaranteed beth death benefit had reset. And when the market crashed and it was only worth this, the family received this. That's the value mm -hmm. that a variable annuity can provide. See, everybody talks about the fees. Mm -hmm. They're very slow to talk about the value. And that made a huge difference to that woman's Yeah, uh, when you portfolio. think about the arbitrage of the fees and the value of that death benefit to that family, that value, now it becomes a valuable proposition. I mean, there's the trade-off. Uh, talk to me about it because she went through another uh, uh, kind of a life event. She went through a divorce. How did that yes. affect her? Well, in it, her practice? it affected her. Here she is in, in her mid 50s. You know, like a lot of people, they're, they're nearing retirement. She goes through a divorce. She happened to be the breadwinner in her house. So mm -hmm. she lost money in that divorce. And now she's going, Holy, what, what am I supposed to do? You know, am I going to be able to retire mm -hmm. okay? And But it was because she was able to run lifetime income annuities and deferred income annuities that she was able to see that the payout rates were high enough that she was was going to be able to retire comfortably. I mean, this is her own personal mm -hmm. situation. And, and you think about it here, she's a, a top producer. She's been a, you know, top of the table, quarter of the table qualifier. You think, oh, they never worry about their income, but you know what? They've got expenses. And if they go through a divorce, it can be a, mm -hmm. a very expensive situation. But because of the guarantees and the mortality credits from guaranteed lifetime income, she was able to get, uh, she was able to have peace of mind in mm -hmm. her own retirement. Well, talk about this case study that, that you mentioned about this couple who was able to retire based on their guaranteed lifetime income because even though this is you and I, so we sing this song all right, the time, right. but it's so powerful because this is how people like Christy are making huge living at top of the table production. Right. Well, they listen to what's of concern to the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two cases in here that I think fit. One was a case where the people didn't think they had enough money and that the husband got laid off and he's going, oh no, what am I going to do? I got to get a new job. And he was all stressed out. 
Well, she sat down with them, showed them the guaranteed payout rates in a lifetime income annuity and then optimizing some of the rest of the portfolio. He did not have to go get a high paying job. He could get a part time job or he didn't even have to work if they were willing to lower their standard of living mm -hmm. a little bit. But she was able to give them tremendous peace of mind uh, with the products that the insurance industry offers. The other one was a case where a very wealthy couple comes in and they couldn't qualify for a home loan. Now here they're wealthy, but they couldn't qualify for mm -hmm. a loan because they didn't have enough income coming in. She set up a lifetime income annuity. They qualified for the loan and she said, I would have never thought in a million years that these people would need income to mm -hmm. qualify for a loan because they were kind of wealthy, but mm -hmm. they, they needed that income and they loved it so much that they bought another lifetime income no, annuity let, for let some me, income. Let me make sure I get this right. So the bank loan was predicated on their income. Without the annuity, they didn't have enough income to generate to validate the loan. That's correct. Now, see, that to me is wild. And we never think like that. How I many never times do. do we think that, oh, well, an income annuity could help them qualify for a house? We just don't think that mm -hmm. way. But but these are the cases that, I'm, that are throughout this book that I found that were just unique that mm -hmm. you and I just wouldn't ever come up with. You know, in your first example of her story where the, the gentleman lost his job and he said, boy, I don't, I don't, I'm going to have to get a job now and everything else. And when they looked at their ability to generate income based on what they had, which they didn't know they could get. Right. This to me is another example of they made just a small modification in their lifestyle. Just a little bit down, just a right. little bit down, and they were able to do something they thought was impossible. Right. See, to me, these are the stories. Sometimes the stories are better than our balance sheets or some of our modeling or our retirement proposals that are just un, just mathematics on a piece of paper. It's it's absolutely correct, you know. And and Christy gives some great advice in here as well, you know, and and how she said, you know, that she was a failure for 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years that, that she did she was not an overnight success. She she did about everything wrong that she could do wrong. Mm -hmm. But but she found her own voice and she found how these products mm -hmm. help people and that turned it around for Christy. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just hop out to downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow.